Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. You have peace in your spirit. You have all the peace that you will ever need. You say, well then, why am I so frustrated all the time? Because you're allowing it. Father, we thank you for the word tonight. And we believe it's going to have a great impact on people's lives. And we know it makes the devil mad because he wants us all upset, worried, and anxious, and acting bad. But we thank you, Lord, that what you have for us is greater than anything the enemy has. Amen. All right. A lot of you were here last night, and that's good because sometimes it's a little hard to catch up after a couple of sessions have gone by. But just want to briefly remind you again that we're teaching as a foundational scripture out of Isaiah, I mean, out of uh, Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, where Paul prayed that the church would have revelation and wisdom about God, who he was, that they would know God. And that they would have revelation and wisdom about the hope of their calling. This wonderful thing that Christ had called them to. This wonderful life that they had been called to. And that they would understand the inheritance. The inheritance. An inheritance is something that's given to you. Something someone else has earned that is given to you as a gift. And Paul said, I pray that you would have revelation about the inheritance that is yours in Christ. And then he went on to pray in verse 19 that they would also know the power that was available to them. To them and for them through Christ. So one of the things, one of the many wonderful things that are part of our inheritance is peace. To be honest with you, I've pretty much decided that life is not worth living without peace. I'm glad I'm saved, but I'll tell you the truth, if I've got to be miserable every day that I'm here, worried and upset and frantic and frustrated, I would just as soon just go on and be with the Lord. I spent way too many years of my life miserable. I spent many years of my life as a Christian miserable because I did not know how to access the peace that was mine through Christ. I can tell you tonight that you never again have to pray for peace. Stop praying for things that you already have and start asking God to give you revelation about what's yours in Him and to teach you how to walk in the Spirit and be in the Spirit so what is in your spirit can be usable to you in your everyday life. How many of you believe that as a Christian, God is in you? You believe that? All right, now, here's a little piece of wisdom. If God is in you, then everything that's in Him is in you. Everything that He has, you have. It's given to you as a gift from Him and intended for you to use. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the King of Righteousness. He certainly was joyful. The kingdom of God is not things. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I don't think you can have peace until you know who you are in Christ. And I don't think you can have joy until you have peace. I believe in Romans 14, 17 when it says the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. I think it actually comes in that order. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit tonight a little bit further on about how important it is that you are at peace with yourself. So many people are in a private war within themselves. And you know, you can put a smile on it and take it to church and you can paint it and dress it up. But that doesn't say anything about what's going on in your heart. And I tell you, it is wonderful when you can enjoy peace every single day of your life. Isaiah 54, 17. Let's take a look at this wonderful scripture that you'll all recognize. But no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall show to be in the wrong. 
Amplified Bible amplifies the Greek and says this peace, righteousness, security, and triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. So, part of your inheritance is peace, righteousness, which is right standing with God, security. You don't have to lack confidence. You can be secure and know who you are in Christ and be bold and strong and not live in fear and triumph over all opposition. It's part of your heritage from God. Now, in Isaiah 9, we're going to put this scripture up. You don't have to try to look all these up, but I want you to see them. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Now, I don't, I don't think that's talking about the government like we talk about the government. <laughs> I think that's talking about the governing of our lives. So the government of our lives shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. Now let's just stop there and think about that. To the degree that his government increases in your life, to that degree you will enjoy peace. If God is only getting to govern your life and govern your thoughts and govern your emotions just a little bit, then you may experience a little bit of peace every once in a while. But the more that you let him govern you, the more you agree with God, the more you think like he thinks, act like he acts, want what he wants, say what he says, the more you are going to have peace. Now, I just need to stop here and ask you, do you want peace in your life? Do you want it bad enough to change a few things if you find out in my sermon tonight that there's a few things you're going to need to change? Because I can tell you that peace is yours. It's a gift from God. But you're going to have to pursue it, and you're going to have to learn how to access it. And when I finally decided that I had had enough and that I was going to do whatever I needed to do to find out what was stealing my peace, because Satan is a peace stealer. And I can tell you that he knows which ones of your buttons to push. <laughs> he knows exactly what upsets each one of us. And in many ways, sad to say, he knows us better than we know ourselves. But you can learn what the things are that steal your peace. And you can make adjustments in your life and no longer let those things rule over you. And I believe that you're going to see a handful of things, each one of you, and it may be different things for different ones of you, but you're going to see different things before you get out of here tonight and go, oh. <laughs> Simple. I'll just throw one out. Just, we'll talk about it later. But do you know that you could have tons more peace, some of you, if you would just mind your own business? Just stay out of stuff. I mean, my goodness, you may be trying to mess in everybody else's business and your own life's a big mess. And I used to be a very nosy person. I wanted to be involved in everything. I was very happy to tell anybody how to run their life. And it stole my peace all the time. Well, I just really, really try because my bent would be to get involved. So now I have to really, really try to just, I even say to myself, Joyce, that's none of your business. None of your business. Now, I have pages <laughs> of stuff like that that I have learned by really watching my life what things I may need to change in order to enjoy that peace. But see, it, I would much rather have peace than to be in your business. It's just not worth it. Been there, done that, don't want to go around that mountain again. Can anybody say amen? amen? So, now in Ephesians 2.14, I'd like us to look at that because this really blesses me. For he is himself our peace, our bond of unity and harmony. He made us both, Jew and Gentile, one body and has broken down and destroyed and abolished the hostile dividing wall between us. 
I love that. How can we get rid of the strife between people? We realize that he's our peace and that he has broken down that dividing wall between classes of people. I can be at peace about who I am without comparing myself with someone else. Because there really, frankly, is no difference if you look at it properly. Because all of our worth and value is based on who we are in Christ. Not on anything else. Not our level of education or your lack of education that makes you unimportant. It has nothing to do with the color of your skin or whether you can sing or whether you can preach or, you know, even how you look. All of that vanishes. All of those things that drive barriers between us and, and make us hostile toward one another have all been broken down in Jesus and he brings us peace. You know what that means? I can get along with anybody. Because I know that my worth and value is in Christ and their worth and value is in Christ and I don't have to compare myself with them. I don't have to try to be better than them, more than them. I don't have to get into that anymore. We no longer need to be jealous or envious of those who have more than we do or those who have something that we want. Maybe you're a single young lady and you have been the bridesmaid 20 times <laughs> and you are just frankly fed up with it. And now your best friend is getting married and you're still not getting married. And the truth is, is you're jealous and you're beginning to get resentful and you just don't understand. Maybe you need a job and you've seen other people be able to get a job, but you're still looking for a job. It's easy to get jealous of somebody who has anything that we would like to have and we don't have. But we don't have to do that anymore because God's got an individual plan for each one of us. God's got a plan for you. God's got a plan for me. God's got a timing for you. He's got a timing for me. He's got a way for you. He's got a way for me. And all I have to do to keep my peace is just say, I'm so excited for you. And even if I can't say it and mean it, I can say it by faith and hope my feelings will catch up with it. <laughs> I am so excited for you. And I'm trusting God in my life to do what he wants to do for me, his way, in his timing. Do not let jealousy eat you alive. Learn to be happy for other people that are blessed. One of the ways that God tests our maturity, I can promise you this, is he will run somebody in front of you that's got what you want. And it may be somebody that you think deserves it a lot less than you do. And that ramps it up to another level, doesn't it? That really makes it aggravating. And can I just tell you tonight that jealousy is ugly and greed is ugly. And until you can be happy for people who get what you would like to have and trust God to bring you yours in his timing, you will probably never get what you want. Amen. Turn to somebody next to you and say, this is good preaching. <laughs> Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance. And in everything, by prayer and petition, definite request with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace that passes understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. What are you supposed to do when you want something, need something? Pray and be thankful. Find something in your life to be thankful for. A thankful person is a powerful person. Stop meditating on everything that's wrong with everybody in your life. Everything's wrong with your job. Some of you griped and complained about the job that you lost and now you'd love to have it back. <laughs> well, I don't know where that came from. I wasn't planning on that, but there it is. <laughs> so we're just gonna believe that was God. That just kind of snuck out right there. <laughs> Isn't it true though, you know? I mean, that husband you're crabbing about, some lonely woman would take him. <laughs> Amen. Please remember to purposely be thankful. 
I mean, do it on purpose. Don't let yourself get grouchy and cranky. Refuse to start murmuring and complaining about things all the time. Be anxious for nothing. God's will for us is peace. And let the peace, soul, harmony, which comes from Christ, rule and act as an umpire. Now, what's an umpire? An umpire says what's in and what's out. So, one of the things that you need to do is start letting peace rule in your life. One of the reasons that God has given us peace is so we can tell when something's right and when it's wrong. God is the author of peace. And some of the messes that many of you are in right now, and some of the messes that I've had in my own life, if we would have followed peace, we wouldn't be in those messes right now. Amen? Amen. We do, like I said this morning, we do stupid stuff. We do stuff that doesn't make any sense, and then we end up paying the price for it later, and now we're wanting God to fix it. Well, start to let peace be the umpire in your life. And you know what? If you don't have peace about something, don't do it. And even if you can't explain it, you don't have to be worried about explaining it. You can just say to somebody, you know, I can't really tell you why, but I just don't have peace about going to that party. You know, I cannot, I don't really know why myself, but I just don't have peace about buying that thing. You know, maybe you've got the money, but maybe the timing is all wrong. Maybe you have the money, but God knows there's something else coming in a few months that you're going to need that money for, and he's trying to get you not to spend it on something right now. So we need to learn to follow peace. I'd like you to make a commitment all over these buildings tonight. People watching by television, this can be something between you and God. It can be the most wonderful blessing in your life. If you don't have peace about it, don't do it. Amen? And if you do have peace about it, do it. Stop overriding your conscience and expecting to have peace. Now, if you want to have peace, you've got to keep your mind on right stuff. In Isaiah 26, it says, He whose mind is stayed on me, I will keep him in perfect peace. So it's really important what you put your mind on. Now, a real important scripture that we know to look at tonight, John 14, 27. Let's look at this. John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. Jesus said this just before his ascension. I guess he could have said all kinds of things, but this is what he said. Peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath unto you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed, and do not permit yourselves to be fearful, intimidated, cowardly, and unsettled. Does anybody get that? Yeah. So here's what you got to understand. You have peace in your spirit. You have all the peace that you will ever need. You say, well, then why am I so frustrated all the time? <laughs> because you're allowing it. You're permitting it in your life. You're going with your mind. You're going with your feelings rather than walking in the Spirit. I'm going to give you a good example. Can I have my little helpers come out? All right. Now, you've got to stand somewhere so where they can see you. So we'll just move this chair here for just a minute. Okay. Now, let's just make a little nice, nice. No, just here. Remember, like I told you before, instructions. <laughs> All right, you stand right here. Now, you just kind of stand right. Just right over there, just a little bit behind him. Okay, right there. Now, this is kind of, you know, the way we are as people. This represents your body. And, you know, not to be rude, but the body's a little bit stupid. So, all the body knows is just, you know, I want to look cute, got to primp, got to take care of myself. And then sometimes it gets lazy. It just wants to lay down and sit down and do nothing and then get up and primp some more. Now, you know, the, the, the soul here is, can just be a real mess. I mean, you never, you never know what your soul is going to do. I mean, it just cries one time and laughs outrageously <laughs> the next, just a few minutes later and is always trying to figure something out, always trying to figure something out. Then it gets upset again and something happens and it's really all frustrated again. And then here, <laughs> in your, here's your wonderful peaceful, angelic. This was so funny. Jody said when I was telling them what I wanted to do, she said, oh, it would be cool if we had a pair of wings. 
Somewhere in this church, she found these wings. <laughs> you guys are a church with everything. So now, here she is, just so, so peaceful. Now, see, the thing is, is you've got everything in here you need. But you've got to get through the, West, the rest of this mess <laughs> to access it. So I've spent the last 32 years trying to teach people about the, the flesh. And this is the flesh right here, these two. <laughs> your flesh, when the Bible says the flesh, don't walk in the flesh. It means your body and your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And then the mouth on the body expresses what the mind, will, and emotions feels. <laughs> now, the other side of it is, is you can be mature enough in God that both of these get crucified and the way that you die to self is you no longer give in to these demands. You just, you just can throw the biggest fit that you want to throw, but still you're, you're just going to make a decision out of your spirit, I'm not listening to you. Not pit. You just wear yourself out, throw all the fit you want to, just try to figure out anything you want to figure out. You can just be full of self-pity all day, but I am, I am going to take you to church, and we are going to help somebody, and you are not going to rule me. You are not going to boss me around anymore. We are going to learn to walk in the Spirit. Amen? Now, let me tell you something that I thought was funny. When I was kind of trying to figure this deal out, I'm thinking, okay, who's on the team that I can grab real fast and go along with this? Because I only planned this like, you know, this afternoon. So um, I'm thinking, okay, J Jody could do the body part. She'd be really good. And then I thought, I, I know Matt could really ham it up, and, you know, do the, do the soul. And they wouldn't need a lot of training. And I thought, oh, Candy, she'd make a really good peaceful spirit. And then I thought, well, now, wait a minute. This is all supposed to rep represent one person. And I've got a woman, a man, I've got two white people, one black person, is this going to work? And then all of a sudden God said, it's perfect. Because in me, you're all one. Yeah. Amen. Isn't that great? Amen. So you guys can go, you did a wonderful job. Thank you. Now, the way that your soul can lose power and your spirit can gain power, the way that you can build in that ability to stay in peace is to just stop giving in to the demands of your flesh. Just let it have its fit. Let it go on, but you choose to do what you know is right. You pursue peace. You make a decision in here tonight. Peace is mine. I've seen it. I'm going to have it. If anybody can have it, I'm going to have it. I am a child of God. It is part of my inheritance. And I am not, hear me devil, I am not going to live my life upset and frustrated and depressed and discouraged and having temper tantrums all the time. I will not be ruled by my emotions. Well, I'm praying for God to help me. <laughs> Put up John 14, 27 again, please. I'm glad you're praying for God to help you, but I already told you you don't need to pray for peace. You've got peace. What you need to do is pray for revelation about how to access this peace and pray for wisdom to start choosing peace over one more round, go around around the mountain in frustration. Peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath unto you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated, disturbed. And do not permit yourselves. Now one of the things you got to stop doing is saying, I can't help it. <laughs> well, I wish I had peace. And I wish I was one of those easygoing, peaceful people. And yeah, I used to wish that. I mean, I am not like my husband. Dave was born peaceful. I mean, it is so easy for him to cast his care because he just don't care. But I care. I care about everything. 
I don't understand people when you say, what do you want to eat tonight? I don't care. I, I care. I've got a plan for what I'm going to eat tomorrow when I get home. I care. I care about everything. I offered to buy my daughter a really pair of pretty pajamas the other day. She said, I, I don't care. She said, I'll just, I can sleep in anything. I care. I want to match when I go to bed. I want to look good. <laughs> it would be nice not to care about some of these things, but I care. So I've had to learn to access this peace. And I want to tell you, and believe me, if any human being, any human being can learn to be peaceful, I know because I learned.